Hello, Nephew community. My name is Sean George. I'm a medical science liaison with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization. I am here with Shauna Reed, who is going to discuss the role of a nephrology nurse practitioner in managing patients on chronic dialysis. Shauna is a board certified nurse practitioner in family practice and acute care. She has been in nephrology taking care of dialysis patients for almost seven years. Shauna, we're so happy to have you today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Sean, for having me. And I look forward to having a very fruitful discussion with you about how nurse practitioners can help in dialysis patients. Awesome. So I want you to start off by giving us an introduction on your role as a nurse practitioner in caring for patients on dialysis. Sure. So I got into dialysis by chance. I have known um, a nephrologist for a very long time and was looking for something part-time that worked well with my schedule and my family life. And it has become um, something that I'm very passionate about. I've been doing it for almost seven years and I exclusively round on in-center dialysis patients. I currently cover for two nephrologists in Lubbock, Texas, but I live in rural New Mexico in the Southeast part of the state. And so in rural parts, it's very difficult for the nephrologist to come this distance. And so with me living in the community, it's easier for me to cover for these nephrologists. And so currently I work at three dialysis centers, um, two in Lee County and one in Eddy County, New Mexico. And currently my practice is about 120 in-center dialysis patients. And so I travel back and forth and provide anywhere from two to three um, dialysis visits per month. And then in conjunction, I sometimes will round with a nephrologist. So there's good continuity of care for the patients and can kind of catch the nephrologist up on some of the happenings that may have happened during the rest of the month. And working part time for me, just doing dialysis rounds has afforded me a lot of personal and professional opportunities and a significant amount of fulfillment. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, tell me a little bit about the complexities involved in managing patients on dialysis. So dialysis, as many people know, is an animal all among themselves and sometimes very difficult to manage. These patients have lots of comorbidities. They see lots of different specialists, providers, cardiologists. They're oftentimes going through transplant workup. And specifically for me, my major issues include rule associated problems, specifically transportation, getting them to dialysis treatments is sometimes very difficult, um, getting them to vascular access appointments, getting them to follow-up appointments for transplant or cardiologist visits. Um, our nearest cardiologist is sometimes two hours away. Our transplant centers can vary from two to five hours away one way. And so having social issues with regards to that family support is very difficult. On that same aspect, having patients be able to afford medication. Binders is a huge issue. And so making sure that we have all of the support for patients is very difficult in that regard. So what about some of the issues that you face while the patients are on treatment? Talk about talk a little bit about that and how you manage those issues. Sure. So because I live in the same community as these dialysis centers, it's not uncommon for me to pop into the dialysis center three and four times a week. And so I see these patients quite frequently. Um, and the dialysis issues are very common among the spectrum. Higher low blood pressure managing their labs, specifically um, phosphorus binders. Our patients can sometimes become complacent and not take their binders. Fluids is a huge issue, so making sure that our patients are always educated. The fluid seems to come around in a seasonal summertime. It gets very hot in New Mexico. We had some days that it was seven days of 100 degree temperatures and trying to educate patients that, you know, not to overdo it on their fluids. It's very difficult in that regard. We have a very supportive staff in all three of my clinics. And so 
they all know they can pick up the phone and call me. And I, in most instances, can come to the dialysis center within 10 minutes, where a lot of it can be handled over the phone or through um, messaging. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for going through that. I know you touched a little bit on phosphorus. Can you talk a little bit more about some of the key labs you look at when you're managing these patients? Sure. So I am, tend to be very organized and use a systematic approach when I'm rounding on all patients. I find if I use a systematic approach, I'm less likely to miss something. And so for me, my major targets are going to be the CMS clinical quality measures or the scores that the dialysis centers are most likely to be graded on. And I usually start with the CBC. I'm looking at their white count, making sure that there's no evidence of any type of infection. Then I go down to their anemia management. I like to look what their, look at what their trends are on their hemoglobins. I look at their ESA, what the dose is, what the frequency is, have we had to titrate up or down in the algorithm. Um, and if there's any particular issues with the hemoglobin, I like to go a little bit further and figure out the source of that issue. Um, second, I look, or third, I look at the electrolytes. I like to look at their potassium and their sodium just to kind of give me an idea of what their fluid balance is. Um, then I move over to adequacy. If there's issues with their adequacy, then I try to target what that issue might be as far as treatment time, heparin, access issues, anything like that. And then the last thing I tend to look at is the bone and mineral labs that include albumin, um, calcium, phosphorus, and their PTH. Typically, albumin is one of our bigger indicators, and I love to make sure that if patients are eligible for the oral supplement nutrition, that we get them going on that. There are some grants out there that patients can have that at home on non-dialysis days, as well as in-center. And then we have a few patients that we can put on IDPN, um, and so I try to make sure that those patients are on that and we've got the dose adequately adjusted and they're tolerating that. With regards to labs, that's pr primarily how I systematically look at it. But included in my assessment is I always try to look at their fluid balance, look at their dry weight. Um, that fluctuates a lot, especially during seasonal time. Summer, they tend to gain a little bit more. Um, around the holidays, they tend to gain a little bit more. So trying to keep them euvolemic is um, difficult. And getting patients on board and getting some patient buy-in is sometimes difficult because they lose sight of that depending on how long they've been on dialysis. So you've got to keep them motivated for that. Um, I always look at their access to determine, do they have a central venous catheter that needs an access plan? Do they have an adequately working fistula? Do they have a graft? Have we had any issues? When's the last time that they've had any interventions? And I also lastly look at a set of vital signs. I look at their vital sign trends from when they come on to treatment, throughout treatment, and I like to look at a blood pressure post-treatment. So those are my systematic things that I look at during um, each patient round. Great, thank you for going over those. Obviously there's a lot of moving parts with these patients, right? Lots of things to look at. And there are also um, a lots of complexities are involved as well. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Now, what we, what I do know is the, the dialysis care team is, is vast in the dialysis mm -hmm. unit. I want you to tell us a little bit about the members of the dialysis care team and how do you interact with the dialysis care team as you manage these patients? So it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I always have to remind myself that I was a nurse, and so I try to be kind to our staff. And then I remember that that I work for the patients, and specifically I work for the nephrologists, not necessarily for the centers. So I have to find a balance in creating very collegiate relationships so that our patients get the best care possible. But I love to communicate with the techs. The dialysis techs are a wealth of knowledge. They're the ones cannulating our patients. They're the ones setting up their machines. They know what their dry weights are, and they know if the patients have room to be challenged. So a lot of times if patients need to be challenged, these dialysis techs are the first to tell me they may or may not be able to tolerate that, or I have them at their max. I can't challenge them anymore. So I love to um, round with the techs. I love my nurses. My charge nurses are my right hand people. They help me get in all the meds. They help me manage the labs. They help me manage all of the algorithms. And so I depend a lot on the nurses for 
the clinical side of things as far as labs and things like that go. Um, we also have a very dedicated social worker who's doing our depression screens. And so there's a lot of times that she will let me know that we have a patient that did not score well, and we can make referrals to different mental health services to try to get that um, taken care of. And lastly, our dietitian is a rock star. So she is on top of all of our bone and minerals. She's on top of our albumin and her and I work very closely together. Um, I sign the majority of our medication orders, um, changes in binders, um, and that happens very frequently in dialysis. And so making sure that the patients have a quick turnaround time on those types of things makes their care a little bit better. But the number one take home piece that I could give anybody about a clinical team is making sure that you put together a really good solid team because we all have a piece of the pie and without having a good solid team, it doesn't flow as well. It doesn't work as well. So I really think that having a good team is the primary goal. But with regards to having a nurse practitioner in the unit, I feel like we are able to spend more time with the patients. The nephrologist um, are spread very, very thin. They are very hard to come by. They have hospital obligations. Some of them are interventional. And so I feel when the nurse practitioners come into the unit, we're able to spend more time, look at some of the med reconciliation a little more carefully. We can adjust meds a little more carefully. Um, and that gives us more time with the patients. And so I feel like the communication with the patients is better. The education is a little bit better just because we have more time. And so I think the nurses really do appreciate that the nurse practitioners do come into the unit. Awesome. Yeah, it's so important to understand the different professionals role when you talk about the dialysis care team. And I really appreciate you going through each of those for us. Sure. Sean, I wanna thank you for joining us today. That was a great overview on the role of a nephrology nurse practitioner in managing patients on chronic dialysis. Nephew community, thank you for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed the discussion. We will see you next time here on Nephew.